Hey everyone, an exciting day today. Guess what came in the mail? My mail-in ballot. It's finally here. So I'm going to uh, vote on my mail-in ballot. There's a few things to keep in mind, which is there are a few ways to return your mail-in ballot, which is right here. So you can return your ballot by mail, you can return it at a secure drop box, and you can return it on election day at your assigned polling location. So let's talk a little bit about that. If you return your mail-in ballot by mail, make sure you vote as early as you can and send it in right away. Uh, you don't want any potential delays when it comes to the, um, the mail process. If you return it on election day, what you can do is you can surrender your mail-in ballot on election day and make sure you take all your components to the polling location. So um, otherwise your, um, your mail-in ballot might not count. So let's go ahead and uh, open the mail-in ballot. Here. And there are several components of the mail-in ballot. There are, um, here's the return envelope. Here is the um, instructions to complete the form. Um, there's a insert here. And here is the ballot itself. So let's review some of these, um, some of these instructions they have helpfully included for us. Uh, it says mark your ballot as soon as possible. Uh, make sure uh, because your voter ballot must be received in the Indiana County Voter Registration Office. Um, it says no later than 8 p.m. on the day of the primary election. However, Governor Wolf got that extended. So as long as it is post-March on election day, um, it will still count as long as it's received by Friday. But I do not recommend voting, uh, waiting until that last minute, of course. You don't want to take any chances. Now, the deadline for military or overseas voter to return their absentee ballots are 5 p.m. on the seventh day following a primary or an election. So they get a little bit more time, um, but that envelope must also be postmarked uh, no longer than 11.59 p.m. on the day before the primary or election. So you have to mark your ballot in secret. So I'll be voting today, but I'm not going to show you who I'm voting for. You have to... Uh, use a black pen, and I think I have a black pen around here somewhere, but uh, here it is because a black pen, otherwise it might not be uh, counted. You must blacken the oval completely. Don't make a check mark. Don't make an X on there. Make sure you uh, completely mark that. Um, then what you're going to do is um, fold it completely and put it in what's called a secrecy or a privacy envelope. So this is very important because the Supreme Court has ruled recently if it's not in this uh, envelope that has to be returned inside the envelope, um, they, are they are required to reject that ballot. So that's an important thing. We don't want any naked ballots on election day. So make sure you are returning the ballot inside or uh, ballot inside of an envelope which is inside of an envelope. So you're going to be mailing two ballots back. Um, then what you have to do is you have to complete the outside of the envelope here with all of this information and make sure you sign it and date it. Uh, and it's not your birth date, it's actually your, um, uh, today's date. It's the date that you mark your ballot is the date that goes there. There's a common mistake they're finding is people are putting their date of birth, so you don't want to do that. Um, securely seal the envelope. Uh, mail it or deliver it. Make sure it gets to the um, ballot to the polling location by the deadline. So you could also take um, to your ballot in person uh, to the polling location and uh, surrender that. Don't mark it up before you get there because they're just going to discard that and um, and that would be a waste of time. So take your blank ballot to the polling location if you want to um, inner envelope, outer envelope, etc. And they are going to, um, they will check your status to make sure um, you're not voting twice if you, um, uh, if you show up there on election day. So here's the ballot. Um, I'm going to mark mine in private here, but I will also read off um, the names here that we have to choose from. So presidential elect electors, uh, I'm going to, there's a option for Joe Biden. There's an option for Donald Trump. 
there's an option for Joe Jorgensen uh, under the Libertarian Party. And there's also a write-in um, write section. Uh, also on the ballot this year is attorney uh, for Attorney General is Josh Shapiro, the Democrat, Heather Heidelbrock, the Republican, Daniel Wassmer, the Libertarian, and Richard Weiss from the Green Party. Auditor General is Nina Ahmed, is your choice uh, as the Democratic candidate. We have Timothy DeFore for Republican, Jennifer Moore, the Libertarian, or Olivia Faison, the Green Party. For State Treasurer, we have Joe Tesora, the Democrat, Stacy Garrity, uh, Republican, Joe Solowski, Libertarian, and Timothy Ruckel for the Green Party. For representative in Congress in the 15th Congressional District, you have uh, Robert Williams, the Democratic candidate, Glenn Thompson, Republican candidate. Now, if you choose to not vote for somebody for one of these particular offices, you can skip it completely, uh, which is called an undervote, or you can write in a candidate there. Uh, if you do a write-in, make sure you uh, darken the oval to the left and write in that candidate's name. So if you do an undervote or skip a section, your, the rest of your ballot will count. Same as an overvote. If you accidentally vote for more than one candidate, um, all of these candidates that are up for election in this particular cycle, it's just vote for one. Uh, but if you accidentally vote for two, uh, which obviously you shouldn't, that section will not be uh, counted, but the rest of your ballot will. Senator for the General Assembly in the 14th uh, District, that includes Indiana, Armstrong County, uh, part of Butler, and part of, uh, part of um, Westmoreland, uh, going into Murraysville. Uh, your candidates are Anthony DiLoretto, also known as Tony, or uh, Joe Pittman is the Republican on the ballot. And last on the ballot this year is representative in the General Assembly. If you are in the 62nd district, which is the uh, middle part of Indiana County, your cho choices are Dennis Semsick, which is the Democratic candidate, or Jim Struzzi, the Republican. Um, so after you're done voting, like I am here, make sure you fold your ballot and put that in the official election ballot here. Now I'm going to put this in the put this in the envelope. I'm going to seal the envelope. You know, usually I lick this thing, but I guess uh, because it's coronavirus, let's see. I'm gonna take. I don't know if this is gonna actually work here, uh, but I'm gonna try to seal it with water, just so I don't get my coronavirus germs all over the place. I don't think I have coronavirus, but you never know. So uh, that seems to work okay. So my ballot's in the privacy envelope, and then it's going to go into the outer envelope here. Now, um, and also an important thing to note is you can check to see, as I'm sealing this here, you can check on votespa.com to see, make sure you're registered. Um, you can also use that to, um, you can use that to check your registration, uh, register as new, or change your registration up to um, 15 days before before the election. So I have sealed this. Uh, this year, the the state is providing uh, stamps uh, reimbursement to counties to um, cover the postage, which is a nice thing. And also, um, this is just a reminder they include here that about the recent rulings, uh, which were the uh, ballots not enclosed in the secrecy envelope must be disqualified. Also, don't mark anything on that secrecy envelope. They are also required to reject it if there's any identifying marks on that secrecy or privacy envelope. The way that works is um, the outer envelope is designed to um, get your, get your, um, Get your, make sure it goes to the courthouse and it's counted. It, 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 it counts the fact that you have voted. Now, once they once they take that out, the inner secrecy envelope is to protect your privacy so you don't know who you voted for. So that way they can accurately track uh, who's voted, who's not. And then after they separate those envelopes uh, in processing, it guarantees your in anonymity, however you pronounce that word, um, to make sure they know they don't know who's voting. 
So that's the nuts and bolts of making sure you're rotored. I'm going to complete that and then I'm going to go ahead and go down to the courthouse and see if I can put this in the in the secure drop box. I'm gonna wear my trusty vote um, vote mask. If you like a vote mask, let me know. And uh, we'll see you soon because I'm gonna see if I can march down there right now and hopefully they don't mind me um, voting. And Troy looks like he's voting at the courthouse right now dropping off his ballot. So maybe he can tell us, giving, give us any tips and tricks. And hopefully the sheriffs or the deputies there whoever at the security doesn't doesn't uh, don't give you a hard time for video taping so we'll see all right I'll see you in uh, maybe about 15 minutes if you're watching this live thanks and thank you for being a good voter